Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on paracetamol. Introduction Paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen in USA, was first used in 1893. It is the only remaining P-aminophenol available in clinical practice. Paracetamol is ubiquitous and is included in more than 600 commercial drug preparations. It is the active metabolite of acetanilide and phenacetin, which are more toxic. Paracetamol is an effective analgesic and antipyretic. However, it only has very slight anti-inflammatory activity, which seems to be limited to special situations, such as inflammation following dental extractions. In recommended doses, it is safe and has remarkably few side effects. It is free of the gastric and antiplatelet effects of other NSAIDs. Mechanism of action is not well understood. Paracetamol has no well-defined endogenous binding site. It may act by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis in the central nervous system with limited effect on the peripheral nervous system. This mechanism is believed to mediate its antipyretic and analgesic central antinociceptive effects. However, it is not considered to be an NSAID. Explanations of how paracetamol inhibits CNS prostaglandin synthesis includes there exists yet to be discovered paracetamol sensitive COX isoform in the CNS. Paracetamol may act as a reducing agent to inhibit COX enzymes. Some recent evidence demonstrates that paracetamol has an inhibitory action on peripheral prostaglandin synthesizing cyclooxygenase enzymes, inhibiting both isoforms in certain tissues. Under certain conditions, it may exhibit a preferential effect on COX2 inhibition. Paracetamol has also been shown to prevent prostaglandin production at a cellular transcriptional level independent of COX activity. The absence of anti-inflammatory activity occurs as paracetamol has less effect on cyclooxygenase in peripheral tissues due to peripheral inactivation. Paracetamol does not affect platelet function. Pharmacokinetics Paracetamol is absorbed rapidly from the small intestine after oral administration Oral bioavailability is 70 to 90%, with peak plasma concentration achieved after 30 to 60 minutes. It may also be given rectally and intravenously. Rectal bioavailability is 50 to 80%. Plasma half-life at therapeutic doses is 2 to 4 hours and can be 4 to 8 hours in toxic doses. Paracetamol crosses the blood-brain barrier easily as it is non-ionized and lipid-soluble. Metabolism Hepatic microsomal enzymes metabolize paracetamol mainly to glucuronide, sulfate, and cysteine conjugates. None of paracetamol's metabolites are pharmacologically active. N-acetyl-P-aminobenzoquinone-imine, or NAPQI, is a reactive toxic metabolite produced from paracetamol metabolism. At therapeutic doses of paracetamol, only a minimal amount of the metabolite NAPQI is produced by cytochrome P450-mediated hydroxylation. NAPQI is rendered harmless by conjugation with liver glutathione and then excreted renally as mercapturic derivatives. With larger doses of paracetamol, the rate of formation of NAPQI exceeds that of glutathione conjugation. NAPQI combines with hepatocellular macromolecules, causing cell death and potentially fatal hepatic failure. The formation of NAPQI is increased by drugs that induce cytochrome P450 enzymes, such as barbiturates or carbamazepine. Excretion of paracetamol metabolites is via renal excretion. Indications for paracetamol Analgesia Paracetamol is effective in treating both acute and chronic pain. It is available in oral, IV, and per rectal routes. Paracetamol is effective for treating post-operative pain but is probably less effective than NSAIDs in many situations. It may reduce post-operative opioid requirements by up to 30%. Paracetamol and NSAIDs are more efficacious when combined. Paracetamol can be a substitute for NSAIDs as an analgesic and antipyretic for patients with certain contraindications for NSAIDs. Paracetamol is the analgesic and antipyretic of choice for children with viral infections to avoid the risk of Ray syndrome associated with aspirin. PCM is also a very effective antipyretic via central mediated effects. Adverse effects are few and uncommon, 
Examples include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, increased liver enzymes, blood dyscrasia, and allergy. Dosage for adults is oral or IV 1 gram 6 hourly, maximum 4 grams per day. For children, the dose is oral or IV 20 mg per kg stat followed by 15 mg per kg 4 to 6 hourly to a maximum of 60 mg per kg per day up to 90 mg per kg for the first 48 hours. Rectal root is 40 mg per kg stat, then 30 mg per kg 6 hourly with a maximum 5 grams per day. For new needs, 10 days or younger, the dose is oral or IV 7.5 mg per kg 6 hourly. For those who are more than 10 days old, the dose is oral or IV 15 mg per kg 4 to 6 hourly. Paracetamol overdose and hepatic toxicity. With large doses of paracetamol, the rate of formation of NAPQI exceeds that of glutathione conjugation. NAPQI combines with hepatocellular macromolecules causing cell death and potentially fatal hepatic failure. With toxic doses, NAPQI causes centrilobular hepatocellular necrosis, depletion of hepatic glutathione reserves, and acute renal tubular necrosis occasionally. Hepatic damage is maximal 3 to 4 days after ingestion. The formation of NAPQI is increased by drugs that induce cytochrome P450 enzymes, as mentioned previously. For adults, the threshold dose for developing paracetamol toxicity is 10 to 15 grams or 150 mg per kg. Accidental overdosage can occur if combined preparations such as cocodamol are used together with paracetamol. Clinical features During the first 24 hours, the patient may be asymptomatic or have nausea and vomiting. 24 to 48 hours post ingestion, elevated liver enzymes occur. Elevated AST is the most sensitive marker for paracetamol toxicity. The rise of AST occurs before hepatic failure and peaks by 72 to 96 hours. Right subcostal pain and tenderness may occur. Evidence for hepatic injuries such as rising liver enzymes, jaundice and coagulopathy can occur. 3 to 5 days post ingestion, peak hepatic injury and liver failure occurs with hepatic encephalopathy and lactic acidosis, acute oliguric kidney failure, and potentially death. Factors which increases the susceptibility to paracetamol poisoning includes chronic alcohol consumption, malnutrition, and chronic illness. Predictive normogram is used to predict the risk of paracetamol hepatotoxicity based on the plasma paracetamol level obtained between 4 to 24 hours after drug ingestion. It is useful only when the time of paracetamol ingestion can be identified and when the plasma drug level can be measured between 4 to 24 hours post ingestion. High risk patients is where the plasma paracetamol level is in the area above the treatment line. Risk of developing hepatotoxicity is 60% or more and antidote therapy is indicated. Patients with low risk have plasma paracetamol level that is in the area below the treatment line. The risk of developing hepatotoxicity is 1 to 3% and antidote therapy is not indicated. Conditions where the graph may mislead includes HIV positive cases which have reduced hepatic glutathione when long acting paracetamol has been taken, if the patient has pre existing liver disease, and if induction of liver enzymes has occurred. Investigations include serum glucose, urea and electrolytes, liver function test, coagulation profile arterial blood gas analysis, full blood picture, blood paracetamol level at 4 hours post-ingestion, and others as indicated. Management General measures and resuscitation Kindly refer to the video on organophosphate poisoning for a brief discussion on general measures in managing cases of suspected poisoning. Activated charcoal A dose of 1 gram per kg is recommended if given within 4 hours of paracetamol ingestion. Activated charcoal may be beneficial when given as late as 16 hours after a paracetamol ingestion in cases of massive drug ingestion. Activated charcoal does not interfere with the efficacy of oral NAC. N-acetylcysteine or NAC is an agent that increases glutathione formation in the liver. It is a glutathione analog that crosses cell membranes and inactivates NAPQI. Glutathione itself does not cross cell membranes. NAC is indicated when the plasma paracetamol level is in the high-risk region of the predictive normogram. 
NAC is given if the plasma paracetamol concentration is more than 200 mg per litre at 4 hours and 6.25 mg per litre at 24 hours after ingestion based on the plasma paracetamol concentration related to time from ingestion graph. Effectiveness of NAC NAC is most effective when administered within 8 hours after paracetamol ingestion. It is effective within 24 hours and perhaps beyond and can be administered after 24 hours of paracetamol ingestion if there is hepatotoxicity. If ingestion time is unknown or if ingestion was staggered, NAC may still help. Route of administration NAC may be administered orally or intravenously. The intravenous route is preferred as drug delivery is more reliable and there are fewer adverse effects. Dosage for IV route Use 20% NAC or 200 mg per mil infused in sequence. 150 mg per kg in 200 mL dextrose 5% over 60 minutes, followed by 50 mg per kg in 500 mL of dextrose 5% over 4 hours, followed by 100 mg per kg in 1 litre dextrose 5% over 16 hours. Total dose 300 mg per kg over 21 hours. The oral dose use 10% NAC or 100 mg per mil. Dilute 2 to 1 in water or juice to make a 5% solution. Initial dose is 140 mg per kg, followed by 70 mg per kg 4 hourly for 17 doses. Total dose is 1330 mg per kg over 72 hours. Duration of treatment for IV route is 21 hours, for oral route is 72 hours. If NAC was started after the onset of overt liver injury, NAC can be continued until liver enzyme levels begin to decline or when INR is less than 1.3. Adverse effects of NAC includes anaphylactoid reactions such as shock, wheezing and vomiting, rashes, treat with chlorphenamine and observe. Do not stop NAC unless anaphylactoid reaction occurs. Oral NAC tastes horrible as it contains sulfur. Nausea, vomiting and diarrhea can occur with oral NAC. Methionine is an alternative to NAC it offers effective protection up to 10 to 12 hours after ingestion. It is administered orally at 2.5 grams 4 hourly for 16 hours to a total of 10 grams. Intravenous NAC is more effective than methionine at preventing liver damage in patients after paracetamol overdose. Absorption is unreliable if patient is vomiting. Provide supportive treatment for liver or renal failure. Liver transplantation is indicated for severe or refractory cases of paracetamol hepatotoxicity based on the King's College Hospital criteria in acute liver failure for liver transplantation for paracetamol-induced liver failure. Fulfilling the following criteria predicts poor outcome in acute liver failure and should prompt consideration for liver transplantation. Criteria includes arterial pH of less than 7.3 24 hours after paracetamol ingestion or all of the following. PT of more than 100 seconds, creatinine of more than 300 micromoles per liter, and grade 3 or 4 encephalopathy. For non-paracetamol liver failure, liver transplantation is indicated if PT is more than 100 seconds, or 3 out of 5 of the following. Drug-induced liver failure, age less than 10 or more than 40 years old, more than 1 week from first jaundice to encephalopathy, PT more than 50 seconds, or bilirubin 300 micromoles per liter or more. Hepatic encephalopathy grading Cerebral edema in liver failure Ammonia builds up in the circulation as the liver fails. This nitrogenous waste passes into the brain where astrocytes clear it by processes involving conversion of glutamate to glutamine. Excess glutamine causes an osmotic imbalance and a shift of fluid into these cells resulting in cerebral edema and raised ICP. Hepatic encephalopathy can be graded into four grades. Grade 1, there is altered mood or behavior, sleep disturbance such as reverse sleep pattern, dyspraxia, poor arithmetic, and no liver flap. In grade 2 hepatic encephalopathy, there is increasing drowsiness, confusion, slurred speech with or without liver flap, and inappropriate behavior or personality change. Grade 3, Incoherent speech, restlessness, liver flap and stupor. Grade 4 hepatic encephalopathy, the patient is comatose. These are my references. Thank you.